I started smallballsuccess.com really because of hitting. Uh, I feel that I know a lot more about hitting. I've researched it for 20 something years off and on and specifically looking into the so-called dead ball era. Uh, and again, the, it's not that players were shorter in the dead ball era markedly and maybe on the average an inch or two, but not a big deal, but the ball was dead. So they had to learn how to hit low line drives in order to get hits. And that's the technique that I talk about very thoroughly in my two books and in other videos on this site. Uh, I don't talk much about pitching because I don't know that much about pitching and I'm not gonna pretend that I am a pitcher. I would never do that. I always issue the caveat whenever I write something or have a video like this that I'm just making suggestions. And if you know other people out there who are really authoritative pitching coaches and have the track record, if you know I'm suggesting something and they're suggesting just the opposite, you should probably pay more attention to them. On the other hand, <coughs> I know something that probably most of them don't know. And that is what life is like in a relatively short, especially for an athlete, I'm about 5'9", relatively short, uh, broadly framed body type. Uh, pitchers especially tend today, of course, not to have that build. Uh, I'm finding, I'm just beginning my research into pitchers of the dead ball era, but I'm finding that pitchers too, and you know, pitchers more than hitters, uh, probably had a shorter type, like a body type like mine. Uh, it wasn't such a big deal for hitters, but in, in the pitching fraternity, you really noticed that, and they had their yeah, back in 1910, sure, they had their six foot one, six foot three pitchers, but there was probably a larger proportion of guys five nine, five eight, and under in the mix. So it's especially interesting to me that so many of those guys, uh, and I was gonna get Bill James' um, guide to pitching, and I forgot to bring it out here, but he has a, I'm working my way through it and finding a lot of pictures who, uh, and you can you can look at old videos from the time. There are not so many from 1910, but you can find some of 1920s, 1930s, and you can look at uh, some of the pictures of the time. You'll you'll notice how many of them are throwing not exactly sidearm, uh, but they're they're throwing almost from sidearm from a nine, about a 930 angle, just a little bit above sidearm. I really noticed that. Of course, I have other pitching videos that I made much earlier, and I speculate that maybe people of our body type should try throwing submarine or throwing sidearm. And uh, my son, who was a sidearm submariner throughout college, remarked that actually if you look at the pitchers today who throw that way, most of them have that tall, lanky body type, and he's right. And uh, it's also true that if you're going for velocity and who's not, then you're just for physically uh, inarguable reasons, you're gonna get more velocity if you lift up the arm angle a little bit. Uh, I think the reason for that is, I mean, they'll, there'll be all kinds of explanations for it, but you're, you, you always have to somehow work around this forward leg. And so many side armors are actually throwing over their body. I hate that. And I feel pretty confident, even though I'm not a professional coach or uh, trained in kinesiology or anything like that, it's very clear to me that over the long haul, throwing over your body not only takes away from your velocity, but it can really hurt your arm. I don't like that. And so that's why what I'm going to tell you today, I think is an especially good idea. Um, I'm, in my new digs here, I'm 
still doing this video inside because I don't have anything outside that's very flat that I can work on in, in terms of testing uh, pitching technique. So I'm just talking about this inside today, but it's something I'm going to try to develop in future months and get to know better. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything that uh, I haven't had experience of myself in my 64-year-old body. I'm not going to recommend or, or speculate about anything that I haven't tried out. So, hey, if I can do it, I'm pretty confident that you can do it. Um, I'll maybe say one more word about that in just a minute, but let me get to this thing about uh, the slightly higher arm angle. This is what I want to do in terms of taking my discussion of the lower arm angle to a new level. Let's try not submarining or even side arming, but let's try lifting it up. I think the broader body type is probably very appropriate for that. I'm so far just working indoors and trying not to knock over too much furniture. I've been thinking that you know, let's let's imagine that you're stepping into the stirrup of a tall horse, and you really, you, uh, I'm not I'm not really moving much of anything except my forward leg to begin with, and I give that big pump, and by giving the big pump, I'm also coming up on my toes back here. I think Brent Strom and other coaches have recommended that to to get up here and get a little extra leverage. So I'm doing that. And then as only as that foot starts forward do my arms really come into play. I'm throwing out my forward arm to delay my weight shift a little bit. And when I finally release it, it's like that stretched rubber band that's being released. And my back arm is not even really... Uh, it's, it's like I say about the old school hitting technique. They don't ever load their hands far back, what they do is they, by having the 100% weight shift forward, they leave their hands behind. I'm leaving my rear hand, my throwing hand, behind as I come forward. I'm kind of going to lift it up, I climb into the stirrup, and then I want that arm to uh, be the end of the stretch rubber band and I'm going to try to step out as far as I can but you notice I'm also stepping open and a lot of pitching coaches will tell you not to open up that the ball is going to fly off into the right handed hitter uh, I'm working on the the assumption that well, I know I'm, I'm getting more velocity that way because I'm not throwing over my body. It's, it's a very uh, clear, powerful path toward the plate. Yeah, I'm stepping a little bit toward the first base side, but I'm also, I'm not, I think that's really bad when you arch your body and then fly out like that, almost straight up over. You're, see how my front leg is just up and down now. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. Uh, Paul Reddick's wall drill is really good about uh, guarding against that. You don't, you can't bend your back way back and not hit the wall with your rear hand. And that's, see, I'm not going to do that. I said this hand is really just being left behind as the body comes forward. So. My back's not bending and I'm not coming straight up on the forward leg. Um, this, this knee is always bent and everything's coming forward. And I have a feeling that when I get to get outside and start throwing, that you know there's accuracy is always something you have to fine tune when you uh, try out a certain style and I, I don't really anticipate having any big problems uh, getting these pitches in the strike zone. They will probably tend to move laterally. Why would I not want that? <laughs> Isn't that if I'm looking for some kind of edge as 
a short wide frame pitcher, if my pitches have a really extraordinary tendency to move like this, hey, that's I want that on my resume. I want that to be my special thing. That's what's going to make me hard to hit. Now, quickly, I was going to come back to body type and um, how no one who doesn't have your body type really knows what it's like to be you. That's why you have to experiment and, and not just embrace everything that any coach says 100% and never try out anything on your own. Uh, in my case, my hands, for some reason, most people's hands will just go straight down like that. My hands are a little more open. My wrists are kind of weird. I can't actually do a full chin up with uh, elbows completely locked. I can't come all the way down or I'd break my wrists. That I can come all the way down if I do chin ups this way with palms facing forward. That's most people are not like that. So I maybe that gives me an advantage throwing certain pitches. Maybe there's certain other pitches I would not be able to throw because of how my wrists are made. People in my family have wide hands but relatively short fingers as well. Uh, why would I listen to a coach who tells me I must do this and I must never do that? And uh, he doesn't necessarily know what the advantages or the limitations of my particular anatomy are. I need to find those out myself. I'm not suggesting that you do stupid things that, that hurt your body. Always dis stop, cease, desist from doing anything when you feel some kind of twinge in your elbow or your, your back's getting really sore. You're, listen to what your body is telling you. But within those parameters, try new things out. Uh, no coach has your exact body. And within sensible limitations, you should do some exploration of your own and figure out what works for you.